welcome to the Cavalier Corner, a show in which we'll be discussing all kinds of fun topics related to student life. My name is Juliana. And I'm Camille. And today we have with us two special guests. Would you guys like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Karen. I'm a Student Life Ambassador. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm also a Student Life Ambassador. Okay, so if you guys know, I, <laughs> you guys probably won't know, but Karen is the one that edits all our videos and audios. So <laughs> it's kind of excited to have him on. So now when he's editing videos, you'll be hearing himself talk. <laughs> and you'll see it's not that fun. <laughs> All right, so let us see. What are you guys going to school for? Um, Karan, do you want to go first or you want to go first? All right, I'll go. Okay. Okay, I'm going to school for computer science. Well, this wasn't the first choice that I had. So I skipped around a little and uh, I decided to choose computer science after four years. Yeah, it's been four years now. Yeah. How about you, Brandon? Uh, my goal is to go into civil engineering after three years of doing trades, specifically welding and getting an associate's degree last summer. Nice. Okay, so this is going to be random. Out of all the spots on JCCC, what is your favorite place to go to on campus? Maybe you guys have some secret places that you like. It could be somewhere you go get your coffee because I know Juliana is a coffee person <laughs> or it could be where you study because for my, my favorite place is the Math Resource Center because that's where I get all my answers. <laughs> um. <laughs> so for me, it would be Pavilion Galileo. Oh, beautiful. It's the building with the recycled material. It's a really yeah. warm building. So I go there whenever I need to take a nap. Oh. <laughs> Yes. I've had oh. my environmental class there, so I know it's very beautiful. It is. How about I, you, Brayden? I used to take naps there too, just want to say before oh. like my environmental class was um, 8 a.m. class. So I would come in at like 7.40 and just nap until 8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good building. Is it <laughs> weird if I've never fallen asleep on campus? <laughs> I have a fall asleep. Um, uh, a fall asleep on campus thing, but I don't think Cassie will appreciate it. Hi, Cassie. <laughs> but she's not on here. So, Brayden, okay. where's your favorite place on campus? My favorite place traditionally was the CoLab. Uh, that's where I would go and meet with my friends and we could study and they had lots of whiteboards to use. Um, I like using all the whiteboards a lot. Um, but with COVID, I would say the best place to go study it's probably the resource center on the first floor of the library or going and using one of the study rooms upstairs in the third floor those are really nice nice what about okay. you no. so for what i said what about you oh yeah my favorite place is going to be the math resource center because that's where <laughs> i get all my answers <laughs> But, you know, I also like visiting the art museum, the Nerman Museum, that is beautiful over there. And the FADS building, that new building, love it, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. The Rainier Center, the Rainier, the entire Rainier Center is just, yes, Brayden. I got, okay, this, I don't know, this, this is not a secret at all, but um, if you're, if anyone wants to know if like, um, if you ever see, well, it's not ATB anymore, I forget what it's called, but if you have ever wanted to go look at the trades buildings, you can go walk in them. You don't have to be a student specifically in those programs to go walk in those buildings. And the welding lab is actually oh, quite yes. cool to see. Um, I've been, we did, we did a tour there. Well, not a tour. Um, at that time, we were doing poster rooms and Cassie asked us to visit various locations just to look and I took a tour of majority of the campus and it's very beautiful so yes students feel free to wander around you might end up finding cool little spots that you will enjoy and you might end up seeing something that you'd like to participate in so as Britt is trying to stay around the campus it's free <laughs> <laughs> 
Awesome. All right, so I have another question for you. Let's get comfortable. If you could say your favorite movie, what is your favorite movie? Starting with Brayden. Uh, <laughs> that's very hard, but I would say probably my favorite classic to see is Blues Brothers. Um, Ooh, let me write that down. It has a lot of good music in there, um, a lot of talent. Um, not to be a spoiler, but they do completely wreck the mall. Um, and actually, when they made the movie, they didn't know if they were going to break even on it because of how much money they spent. And um, it's actually quite interesting to hear how they um, produced the movie and how much money went into it and how worried they were about actually having enough. It's, it's quite good. It's quite good. It's a comedy. And oh, nice. I will check that out. No more? <laughs> How about uh, you, Corinne? Oh, you're so good. If I had to choose Go a doc on. if I had to choose a documentary, I would say uh, When We Left the Earth by I think the Discovery Channel. That's very, very, very well done. Um, is that is that about going to the moon? That's about the space race with um, America and Russia. And it's it's yeah. very Ooh. fascinating to think or to look at all the technology and everything that went into that coming out of World War II and the Cold War. It's kind of funny how we've we've shooted conspiracy theories. So yeah. now when when persons talk about you know going into space, I'm like, well there's people out there that still believe that doesn't exist. Like we never left Earth. So that's quite interesting. I'll check that out too. Um Karan, how about you? I would go with Godfather. Because there's like classic. the first movie. Okay, that I'd have to write down. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen that yet. Yeah, that's like the wait, first wait, movie. What? That wait, pause. You said what, Brayden? I haven't seen that yet. I need to. <gasps> you gotta watch it, man. Oh, Brayden. Come on. It's for I've the heard, culture here. <laughs> I've heard good things about it. I've heard good things about the, the movie. I just haven't. I, I guess I haven't had the right audience to watch it with yet. I heard it's very isn't a gang, isn't it a gangster movie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it tells you about the culture, as Camille said. Like that was the first movie that I watched that was from 1900s, and I was amazed by just uh, looking at how people acted in the past. You know, like the men were so different in those movies, and in these movies, like. Uh, yeah, it was a huge difference. I probably need to rewatch that. <laughs> I think films from pre two thousands or before they came out with CGI. Um, I think the acting is a lot better and a lot more full. If that mm -hmm. makes any sense. Yeah, it's not um, overacting; it's just the right amount. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Juliana. I think we've asked you this, but oh, we ahead, had let's... so many conversations about what Should my favorite, about your movie favorite movie is. <laughs> and every time I answer a different thing because I can't remember the answer. <laughs> so I had like three favorite movies that I've already talked about in Cavalier Corner, I feel like. Um, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've watched so many things. Um, I think it's but, Disney. You know what? Yeah, you know what? a yeah. lot of Disney films I love uh, for sure. Because they're just nice to like watch and like unwind because it's all just like kids movies, right? So it's all just like happy endings and rainbows and sometimes you need a little sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say okay. probably um, not Disney, DreamWorks, but animated, uh, The Road to El Dorado. Beautiful. Ooh, it's like an early 2000s, like 2005 or so movie. But I loved it as a kid, so bonus points. <laughs> All right, so I will recommend to you guys, if you guys have not seen it yet, um, my favorite kind of mus movies or movie, it would be James Bond. I'm a James Bond girl, 007, here I am. Um, so have you guys seen at, at least one or two and I'll be okay. If you've never seen a James Bond movie, this is where our co-workmanship co ends, <laughs> our friendship ends. <laughs> it's that serious. I've seen Live or Not 
or live and not die or live and not whatever it's it's based off the the Beatles wrote a song for it um you know what that one is it's based in Louisiana it's uh I think it's live I yeah I know which one I can't I can never name them on top of my head but I've I've made a watch list to try to watch every single one from the old one before before I was born, before my grandmother was born. Live I've been let watching die. those. Live and let die. Live, mm -hmm. That's what it is. So yeah, I've watched majority of them. Karen, I have a feeling that you're going to disappoint me right now. <laughs> Karen, have you watched the James Bond movies? Of course. Yeah. I watched the, Okay. Oof. I really like the new one better. The Daniel Craig. I like this one better because he he has the some kind of bond? Bag. yeah, the James Bond one, like the Casino Spectre, the new ones. The Casino, oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I honestly can't tell who my favorite Bond is, but I know I enjoy Bond movies. I like I kind of like action, anything action with um, secret agents. Those things are kind of cool to me. I wanted to be one, but <laughs> yeah, that is not going to happen. All right, I have one more question for you guys. Hey, yes, Brayden. You should watch um, Get Smart, the original series. Yeah, of course I've watched. Well, I haven't seen the series. I haven't the series. watched the series. I tr I'm watch trying the to get them, but I have to purchase them. Yeah, unfortunately. And I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm cheap, so. <laughs> You know, I have to find a site that allows me to watch them. All right, I have one more question for you guys. So I would ask you, who would you say, who was the biggest or who has made the biggest influence in your life? Karen? It could be your family member. It could be someone um, you've observed, someone you look up to. I would say um, there's this book called The Meditations. Mm -hmm. It's from a Stoic philosopher. It's like 2000 years ago. Uh, Marcus Aurelius, that's the name of the person. I think he influenced my life uh, very much. He changed the paradigm, you know, how mm -hmm. the way I looked at the life. It totally changed after I came across this book. Yeah, it is, a, it is about philosophy. How to live Ooh. your life. What did you uh, say? You can, you're gonna send it to me. Is the meditations? The meditations. Yeah. By who? Marcus Aurelius. Okay, you guys are giving me reading assignments. <laughs> <laughs> so now I gotta go watch Blue's Brother and When We Left the Earth, rewatch The Godfire, and now I read a book. <clears throat> and now you have finals too. <laughs> oh, this is all going to be after finals. <laughs> How about you, Brayden? I would say my biggest influencers have been my parents. Um, they've done an awful lot for me. And then my most recent biggest influencer has been my fiance, Amy. Juliana, who's your most, who's your biggest influence? I think I'd agree with Brayden and say my mom. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, those are the best. <laughs> parents. <laughs> parents parents are the best yeah. parents you know parents in general yes. um, what about you Camille honestly I think it's a collective amount of individual like there's not one person or one um, figure that influenced me I guess I'm very observant where I observe every single one and I know this is just not a generic answer, but I believe that everything that I come across influences me. It's either a positive influence or a negative influence, but I, I look at every single thing and then change according or remain the same. Huh. <laughs> All right. So this is a question. I really want to know what Juliana, Juliana, you're unprepared for this. Oh, however. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is something that I've always wanted to ask. Um, what are five things you tell your younger self? I know we oh. should have had a whole podcast. Oh, now everybody's going to go into thinking mood. 
but I make sure spotlighting Juliana because this is something we've talked about so many times. Don't and we're gonna like, yeah, we're gonna talk about this. We never get to do it. So, oh, Camille, why? <laughs> it's the love. Oh, is okay. Uh, so it has to be five things. Okay, that's a lot to think. No, about. it could be um, any amount, <laughs> like something that you tell your the younger version of yourself. Hmm. Could be one thing. Could be. I'm gonna write mine down. <laughs> you got me so okay. unprepared for this. Not fair. <laughs> oh, uh, this is like one of those big life questions, you know? Like you look back, what what would you tell your younger self? You need to go reflect. Karen, are you ready? <laughs> yes. I can go. Okay, Karen. Let's hear what Karen has. Uh, the first one has to be compared to you yourself, who you were yesterday rather than comparing to someone else who them is today. Because uh, being 23 years old, I've did that a lot. You know, people who started the school at the same time, who were in the same domain, um, and we can take a place being envious of uh, people who are in the same domain and exceeded a lot mm -hmm. and uh, seeing yourself, like not competing with them can um, bring up those envious or like bad feelings. So right amount is to compare yourself with who you were yesterday. Because yesterday. Yeah, yeah. they had the time and they sac sacrificed for it. So you didn't sacrifice it at that time. And uh, I don't think uh, we can compress all of that into a little bit of time that we have. So True. it would be wrong right here. I think, isn't that the same thing as um, com compete with yourself? Like don't compete with others, but compete with trying to make a better version of yourself. That's right. That's Basically. that's exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Focus on yourself, not on others. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Um, and the second one would be concentrate on the process, the system that you follow. When you when you set a certain goal, don't don't co concentrate on the goal itself. Concentrate on the process, the system. Let's say if you wanna lose certain uh, amount of weight and uh, you start eating healthy, you start working out. Once you reach that goal, then you don't have a goal, you know, then you have to set a certain goal. So I would say that the process, just continuing that process is a better way of thinking about it rather than the setting the goals. Because if you oh. just keep doing it, it's like you're, you're that person <laughs> rather than you're trying to achieve that goal, you know? It's like you're the person that goes to gym. You're the person that eats healthy rather than you're a person who's trying to lose weight or achieve that. You're going to the gym tonight. Karan doing TED Talks over here. I know. <laughs> it's like he's speaking directly to me because, you know, that's one of the things that I'm struggling with right now. And he's like, okay, Camille, let me answer your question. <laughs> All right. And what's your third one? Third one is... Um, there are three things, you know, that I noticed that increase my productivity. If I do those three things properly every day, is sleep, nutrition, and exercise. If I get good amount of sleep, if I eat healthy food, and if I exercise, I'm like at my best uh, if I do those three things. And I felt feel like those, those things should not be sacrificed. Because, um, yeah, sleep, you know. How many hours of sleep would you say is for your body, because everybody's body is different, sounds so weird. However, but for your body, how many hours of sleep do you take? With coffee, I, I without coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot relate. Coffee people, that's you and Juliana. I don't know if, <laughs> if Koran drinks, oh, sorry. I can't relate coffee people. Koran, if you couldn't drink coffee, what would be the ideal amount of sleep for you? And then with coffee, what can you get away with? I think it'll still be seven to eight hours. Okay. Like that would be like good amount of sleep. Yeah. And coffee is just a habit that I created to just uh, push start my day. I think if I, if I give it up, I do it for just a pleasure. I think just for the taste of it. That's can you stop though? I, I can. It's it just, it gives me headache for a couple of days. But <laughs> it, it's what I'm hearing, Karen, is that you have healthier habits than me. 
I think I'm going to need Karen to be my life coach. Like, Karen, yes. <laughs> I will save your number forever and ever and bother you so you can coach me through this trying time. Yeah. Called life. And get paid. <laughs> oh, come on, charity work. We need to do charity. <laughs> we need to assist people without trying to benefit back from it. <sighs> I donated one over a thousand hours at a summer camp one sum, summer. Nice. You can learn. I'm your summer camp. Donate your hours to me. <laughs> All of that. I mean, that's because we got paid one hour and then you can count sleeping because you can count like staying nights and everything as service hours because you're not there by your own will necessarily. I mean, you are, but like you're giving yeah. Nice. Oh, Karen, were you finished with your things you want to tell yourself? Uh, well, I can go another one. Okay. Just, uh, it would be this, don't sacrifice your future for today. It should be the other way. Like sacrifice today for your future. You know, there are so many things that we get tempted to every day. It could be social media, spending time on social media or eating unhealthy food. Like those things, they can give you pleasure uh, at the Temporary. right moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. like eating a donut, it gives you, it's, it's, it tastes good. It gives you pleasure right away. But over time, it's not good for you. Whether you started like- Is it like, eating bread? <laughs> yeah, you started eating salad, you know? Like, you He's like salad shading me bread. today. Yeah. That's not so too rewarding. Healthy. Huh? Mm -hmm. I said you started eating uh, salad, right? Yes, oh, really? I and I do it out of pleasure. It became more like I enjoy eating a salad, like trying to punish myself. Back before, I was just doing it. Oh, I want to lose weight, so let me eat a salad. But now I, mm -hmm. I genuinely enjoy eating a salad. So, if I eat out, I'll see you in better. Eating a salad. Are you ready, Brayden? Well, no, just to go off of his thing, I got a quote. Um, if you live like no one else, later you can live like no one else, basically. Ooh, yeah, twist on words there. I, I, I like it. All right, Juliana, are we ready? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I guess I just have one main thing that keeps coming back and it's kind of just <clears throat> um, being unique is a strength and not a weakness. Because a lot of times, like throughout high school, especially, I just wanted to blend into the background and just like non-exist, right? Just get in. The eight hours of work and go back home just not right um but no right that's not the greatest way to live life so True. you know embracing your your uniqueness and those things that make you stand out yeah beautiful all right Brayden I know you have your master please ready to <laughs> oh, yeah, I, got a, I got a perfect list right here <laughs> he carved it all right <laughs> um so things I would tell my younger self would be one, relax, um, focus on yourself, kind of going off of what we've been talking about. Um, you know, be you, don't like um, Juliana was saying, don't try and blend in. Um, blending in isn't cool. Um, be, be yourself. Um, life isn't, is not a race. You know, you gotta take, you gotta go one day at a, every, or go one day at a time. It's not a race. You're not, it's not like, at age 16 or whatever, you have to have a career or be whatever or anything like that. Go mm -hmm. at your own pace. Learn. I love how each of you message kind of tied in with one another. Like the messages are just rolling. Like you've got it. You guys got it. <laughs> like my mom used to tell me you're on your own clock. True. Um, that special person will show up. Amen. You know, Sometimes um, you don't expect it. You know, I would I would say date with a purpose. Um, that per that special person will show up. Um, uh, I put a funny I put a funny thing here, but math is fun. Just practice <laughs> lots and lots of. So practice. everybody shaded me today. <laughs> um, you can be successful if you put your best effort forward. Uh, and even if your best effort doesn't get you what you achieve, 
you know it's your best effort and just move on. Yep. If you put your like best that. effort forward, you will succeed. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. It's not about winning. Yeah. I like being surrounded with smart people. <laughs> so I can, you know, get from you guys. <laughs> oh, we try. But everybody's unique, Bill. Yeah, I'm yeah. unique. See, I stand out. Too, yeah. I'm on my own pace. It's like I already got some of these messages. But I think one of the most important message I'll tell my love um, myself is to cherish your loved ones, cherish those around you. Um, and that's simply because you just don't know what the future holds. So, you know, love everybody around you. I lost my grandmother and that, well, my grandparents on both sides and I only have like a grandfather remaining. And, you know, when you're younger, you, you kind of, you, you rather hang out with friends than hang out with family. And that's just, you know, that's just one, either the teen in us or just us being kids, we want to play. We'd rather play than just sit down and talk. But my advice, you know, to my younger self was just, you know, appreciate everyone around you. You don't know when that moment will be gone. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's a really good lesson. <sighs> See, I'm smart too. Like you guys are brushing <laughs> off on me. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have one final question. I keep saying one final. I have one final question for you guys. Um, it was given advice to someone that is going to, to attend school next semester, start college, um, based off your observation, um, your experiences, what would you tell them? It could be one thing, it could be a numerous amount of things. <clears throat> what would you advise these students who are going to come to JUCO? Let's be specific to JUCO. What can you say? I think right now with the online platform, set up a schedule because it's so easy to get behind on everything. If you're going to have mostly online classes and Zoom meetings, you're going to get behind at some point. Like, I mean, for me, at least like that face to face class is that reminder. I got to get the homework done like by this time now. And I do it right. Zoom is different it's not the same. You're at your house, right? You're somewhere where you're comfortable and online classes with no meetings, right? Even worse. <laughs> so set up a schedule for every month, for every week, however it helps you and just be mindful of your time, but also carve out a time for yourself to relax and don't like, right? Just focus on school, but also focus on yourself because you need to take care of yourself first to be able to succeed in anything. Love it. Love it. All right, Karen, are you ready? Yeah, I, I think Juliana made a really good point. The schedule, having a routine, that really helps. I learned that after a long time, but having a routine in your life, you're not you know, wondering what should I do at a certain time or what am I missing, things like those. Yeah. And uh, to newcoming students, the, the first thing that I experienced and that I struggled with a lot was picking a major. And I would say, pick something rather than nothing or rather than everything at once, pick something and see yourself that if you're disciplined, you know, pick something and stay with this for at least six months or a year, rather than just taking one class or uh, quitting it in the middle of it and thinking that it's not for you. You have to put some effort into it to really see that there's a, there's a stage, you know, you put some effort into it and there's a struggle, and if you stick with it for a while, then you be it. Yeah. Brayden, okay. My dolls are making noise, so I'm trying to stay quiet. Uh, Brayden, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're pointing on my on my screen. I'm, I'm on the left side of your video. Uh, all right. Um, so I think the biggest thing that students overlook or don't even think about is, and I do this myself all the time, is ask your teacher questions. I feel like with everything being online, and I, and this is from most of my personal opinion, it's more challenging to ask your teacher questions uh, because you feel like you're going to stop the entire class because it's online and it's two-dimensional, basically, where... 
Um, I mean, it's just like, I mean, in, just the same as in person where you stop the teacher, but it doesn't, online, I feel like it feels not as one-on-one -on -one when you ask that question. Feels but, a little more intrusive, right? When you're like right. online and everyone stops and looks at your screen and it's just like, oh, what I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and even the people who aren't even paying attention. Um, <laughs> but I think that if you ask questions, you'll get the most benefit out of your class and you should ask the question then and not later. Um, another thing it, I would suggest is set up tutoring hours. Now, I, last spring I took Math 116 and I didn't need tutoring help. Although I look, looking back, I feel like I wish I had set that up or um, got into a routine of going to MRC for that because I think my math would have been stronger going forward. Um, making it easier for the next class. Um, I would also say, make a game plan. You know, every week, check your class pages every, every day and make a game plan of, okay, I have, at least for us, we have to go to work. I'm gonna study this subject and then you make sure you check your due dates. Uh, I would suggest those would be great things, academically speaking, and then make sure that you try and spend social time um, with either friends on, I guess, Zoom or Skype or Xbox, whatever. Uh, make sure you get to spend a little bit of social time. And then also, you know, this, this, you know, this time allows you to spend time with your family if you live with your family. You know, cherish that. And that's, that's basically what I have to say. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming. <laughs> it's really fun having a male's perspective on here because it's always been us females or just, you know, females um, tuning in. So thank you guys. We truly appreciate. Feel free to come back. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of Cav Corner. As always, we are JCCC Student Life on Instagram and Facebook if you'd like to check us out. If you want to get involved at JCCC and find out about events that we have going on, check out our Get Involved at JCCC platform. And we are Cavalier Corner on all podcast platforms. And thank you so much, Kron and Brayden, for being guests. It has been amazing. All right. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.